Hello, my name is Cody Anderson, and this is my free demo for learning Target 1A. My goal here is to show you that I understand how to convert between decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal numbers in either direction. So first, we've got a binary to decimal example. Here is my arbitrary binary number. To convert that to decimal, I just need to know what the weights are that are associated with it. So since this is binary to the left of the decimal, I'm going to have a weight of 2 to the 0, then 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and so on, increasing those numbers until I get to the leftmost number, which in this case has a weight of 2 to the 6. And now I take the 1s and the zeros in the binary number and multiply them by the weights. So 1 times 2 to the 6 leaves me with 2 to the 6 as part of my final sum. 1 times 2 to the 5, yep, that 2 to the 5 still sticks around. 0 times 2 to the 4, it's just going to give me 0, so I don't even need to include that as part of my sum. So we add up all of those powers that stick around, and it turns out the final sum is 97. Next one, we're flipping things around. Given decimal, convert to binary. And to do this, I use the repeated divide by 2 method. So the given number, 81, is written in the top left corner of this table. I divide that by 2, and that gives me a quotient of 40 with a remainder of 1. I then take that quotient 40, divide it by 2, and get a quotient of 20 with a remainder of 0. 20 divided by 2 gives me 10, remainder 0, and so on, all the way down this table. I just need to remember that we are going to read this binary number from bottom to top, so my most significant bit is this 1 down here. And as a result, 81 decimal is equal to this number in binary. Now we are going to go from hexadecimal to binary. Up top, my given number in hex is A7E2. And I just know that each of these hex numbers corresponds to a 4-bit code in binary. So 2 corresponds to 0010. Why? Because that 1 has a weight of 2 to the 1 power. E corresponds to 1110. Why? Well, E is decimal 14. This leading one is going to have a weight of 8, the next one a weight of 4, the next one a weight of 2. You add those together, and you get a total of 14. So I just repeated this pattern for the remaining hex digits, and those are the binary results down below. Of course, if I wrote this number in full binary, I wouldn't have these little gaps in between, but I left them in there because it makes it easier to see. Okay, now down below we're going to flip things around, go from binary to hexadecimal. So I have my given long binary number here. I need to split that up into four bit chunks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I just wrote those four bit chunks a little bit wider apart with gaps in between. And so now I can easily see 0011 in binary convert that into hex, and you just get a 3. The only really tricky one here would be this guy here. So 1011 in decimal is 8 plus 2 plus 1, or decimal 11. But I need to write that in hex, and the hex number for decimal 11 is a b, which is why we see a b there. Okay, now we're going to go from octal to binary. And this is actually very similar to what we saw in hex. Uh, but now I have 3-bit codes rather than 4-bit codes. So the given octal number is 427. 7, convert that to binary, you get 111. 2, convert that to binary, 010. 4, convert that to binary, you get 100. And there's my binary number. Okay, going the other direction, I am given a long string of bits. Since I'm going into octal, I know I need to split that into three-bit chunks. So you see my rightmost bit is all zeros, 
which converts to octal zero. My middle chunk is 0, 1, 1, which converts to 2 plus 1, or 3. And then my leftmost chunk, 1, 1, 0. Let's see, these bit positions have a weight of 4 plus 2, which gives me a result of 6. Okay, now we're going from octal to hexadecimal, and this is a little extension from the lesson slides because we didn't have an example of this. But I already know how to convert from octal to binary and from binary into hexadecimal, so I could just do this in multiple steps. So there's my given octal number. I convert that into binary using the procedure I just showed on the previous slide. I then smush those bits together. So I get rid of these gaps. And now I have a long string of bits. To convert that to hexadecimal, I need to split that into nibbles, or chunks of four bits. And so you can see those chunks of four bits split apart down here. Again, I haven't really changed any of the numbers at all in this little step. I've just gotten rid of the gaps and then added new gaps uh, to make them four bits long. And then now, uh, the last step, again, I've shown this already. We just convert from binary into hexadecimal. Uh, for example, these bits have weights of 8 and 2. That makes decimal 10. And then hex, we write 10 as A. Now going from hexadecimal into decimal, I have a given hex number. I need to find the weights associated with those hex digits. 16 raised to the 0 for the rightmost bit, or digit. 16 raised to the 1 for the next digit. 16 raised to the 2 for the next digit. 16 raised to the 3. And then I've reached my last digit. And now I just multiply the given number by its weight. So you see 2 times 16 to the third. C times 16 squared. Since I'm going to plug this into my calculator in decimal, I've written C as 12. 5 times 16 to the 1 power. And then finally 3 times 16 to the 0 power. After plugging all that into my calculator, I end up with decimal 3,555. All right, and then one last example here from decimal into hexadecimal. So similar to binary with the repeated divide by 2 method, I'm now going to apply the repeated divide by 16 method since we're going to hexadecimal. So my given number is 5,678. I write that in the top left corner. Divide by 16, I get a quotient of 354 with a remainder of 14. 354 divided by 16 gives you 22 with a remainder of 2. 22 divided by 16 gives us 1 with a remainder of 6. And then finally, divide 1 by 16, I get 0 with a remainder of 1. Now, I am writing in hex, right? Not in decimal. So I need to convert that 14 into its hex digit. So I'm going to write that as an E. All the rest of them, it's a direct conversion, right? Decimal 2 is the same as hex. And then now I need to remember I'm going to read from bottom to top. So my most significant digit is this one. And therefore I end up with this final number of hex 162E. And that is it for my demonstration of converting between these different number bases.